Well, hi everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today for this special active in mission episode of CBM Calling. Uh, my name is Louise and I'm the team lead for global discipleship here at CBM. Uh, and if you're not familiar with Active in Mission, let me invite you to join us the week of June the 19th to get active in raising funds to make a difference in the lives of children and youth around the world who are suffering from the effects of the pandemic on their education. Uh, we know that education is the most important tool to fight generational poverty. And so we are passionate about ensuring that every child has access to education so that they can have hope in their future. Uh, more about the event later, but first I want to introduce you to someone who is also passionate about education um, and also happens to be uh, CBM's newest global field staff. Catherine Scott, welcome to CBM Calling. Hi Louise, it's good to be here. Yeah, so, so excited that you could join us today uh, after a busy day teaching. Well, let's jump right into the education experience through COVID in your context, Catherine. Can you tell us about teaching through the pandemic and the effects that you've seen on education? Before the pandemic, um, I was doing a lot of substitute teaching work and long-term supply. Um, and when the pandemic hit, obviously education stopped and I wasn't in a full-time role. And then when June of 2020 came along, I started working in an after-school program and then moved this fall into a role teaching grade three. And so my experience is a little bit different than others because I wasn't in a full year long um, teaching position when the pandemic hit, but I get to, I have seen the effects of it um, in my students kind of a little bit still in it and a little bit post if we want to look at it that way. Um, some of my experiences, um, we my school went back online for a couple weeks in January and that was kind of my first experience with the online schooling. And some of the issues um, that I know I saw and my fellow teachers saw was a bit of issues with technology where there would be um, a lot of my students who would have many siblings and so we would be scheduling okay you're gonna be have your class here and you're gonna have your class here so that meant that we didn't get full day instruction we only got a limited time to let everybody see um, their classes and have that chance um, and so that does have an effect when you're not having that full day um, education, which is consistent. Um, and also talking to my fellow teachers, we've seen a lot how some of our skills that would typically be taught in a little bit of younger grades, we're reinforcing more in the upper grades because of the fact that um, they missed that daily. It wasn't that they weren't taught, but the in a classroom you teach the same things um, daily and really reinforce that and because of the inconsistency um, and being in and out of school we weren't able to have that and so there are some ways that we're seeing students have to really um, work on skills that they haven't that they should have maybe had a little bit of a stronger grasp on at this point um, and we also know that any educator would know that academics is a big part of um, being an educator, but also we also teach character and we teach about how to be good citizens and how to be good members of society. And I've noticed that because of the fact that we weren't allowed to be with people and we had to be separate, that when we come back together to um, work on projects or be at recess and seeing other kids, that those social skills are also in a different place than maybe you would typically um, expect them to be because we haven't had those experiences of having to work out our differences and work out our um, issues. I know that that is a skill we learn every day and that I still learn of how to work with people properly, um, but that's so um, vital in a child's education is how to do those things. Um, and I think of the middle school and high school students that have missed big social gaps as well um, because of not being with peers and the growth that happens during those years. Um, and so those are some of the things that I've kind of noticed that we're starting to get back into and be able to grow in, but some of the places that have seen an effect because of the pandemic. Absolutely. That's a great list. And many of those things I, I wouldn't think of. Uh, so thanks for sharing that perspective uh, as a teacher in the classroom day in 
and day out with, I'm sure, energetic and hilarious grade three students. Uh, I have always appreciated teachers. I have uh, a family with lots of teachers in it. I think they are some of the hardest working people I know. And uh, I, think, I think everyone has grown to deeply appreciate teachers as you've gone above and beyond uh, constantly pivoting online and back in the classroom and, and just not knowing day to day where things are going to be at and all of the extra um, rules you've had to enforce with restrictions. I'm sure some days you've just felt more like maybe a police officer than a teacher. Um, but uh, thank you so much for your dedication through this. I'm curious, uh, what got you into this field of education? What, uh, what's um, spurred in you the desire to become a teacher? I grew up with some pretty incredible teachers um, throughout all of my like elementary, middle and high school. Um, and I always thought that I would be a teacher. You can go back in these memory books that my mother has kept um, about like, what do you want to be? And it always said starting at like grade one that I wanted to be a teacher because I saw um, people who got to work with children and got to work with youth and just had such an incredible impact in my life that I wanted um, to be able to do that as well. And so when I got to university, I knew I wanted to pick courses that were going to set me up for that. I was very, um, I like, when I know what I want, I try to go for it. So I was like, I'm gonna get these teachables and do elementary teaching. Um, and because I loved working with um, children and seeing them grow and learn in all aspects of their life. So that kind of got me on my journey. Very cool. I have those memory books too. And uh, that reminded me that uh, there were a number of years where I jotted down that I wanted to be a gym teacher, which I don't think that would have worked out very well. But uh, but I am ha happy to be leading active admission, which is maybe in that vein of, of gym teacher. But uh, yeah, that's incredible to have that desire from such a young age and then and then follow it right through to, to completion. And you're currently preparing to transition from a full-time teacher in, uh, in, you're in New Brunswick uh, to go as global field staff all the way to Guatemala. Uh, but this is not your first time doing uh, global mission work. So how have you seen those skills in education uh, used previously in your cross-cultural experiences? What has that looked like? I have seen it in a few different ways, but the most memorable for me is when I was able to take part in um, CBM Scent Intensive, where I went and I lived in the Philippines for three months um, to be able to learn and serve with the Waddells and the partner KPM. And in if you don't know, in the Philippines, there is a number of childcare centers, which is one of the projects for um, active admission that I was able to go and see and be able to interact with the children, but also the educators. I remember I was also able to share with them a bit about lesson planning at one point and different things. And that was the first time I really got to use my training as an educator um, to be used overseas. And so that was with the child care centers, which I really loved seeing those in action. We had a call uh, last year, actually, for a special edition of Active Admission CBM Calling. We connected with uh, our partners at KPM, and they shared about the child care centers as well. Uh, just an incredible ministry to to kids living in low income areas who, yeah, who wouldn't have access to education uh, at that same level otherwise. And and we know for sure that early intervention is so so important, so foundational for kids, especially those first five years. So. Um, just fantastic that you were able to take part in that scent intensive. That's where I first met you and uh, and I've really enjoyed uh, journeying along with you uh, and to see the way that God has been using your gifts. So you're off to Guatemala in the fall. Uh, so you're finishing off this school year with your students. If your students are watching or or parents of your students are watching, don't worry. Catherine is finishing out this school year. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and as you look back on this past year, uh, what are some of the highlights from this year teaching? I loved really journeying with my students. My favorite thing is to walk with people um, daily. And so to be able to meet these students and to be able to see them grow as we've been together day in and day out. Um, the consistency of this year, even though there was changes in um, some of the restrictions, we were still able for the most part to be with each other every day and to see them be able to flourish through that and see them grow um, has been some of my 
highlights and some of my things I'll remember forever to be able to see like uh, these students are so um, funny and caring um, and the way that they're really taking ownership of their education and wanting to succeed um, is definitely been a highlight for me. Uh, Catherine, thank you so much for uh, for sharing your story with us today and we look forward to hearing a lot more from you as well as you prepare uh, to go to Guatemala as global field staff. Um, can you tell us what you're, what are you doing right now to prepare uh, for this journey in the fall? Yeah, so I'm wrapping up our school year, but I'm also spending some time visiting churches and just letting people know about this journey that I've been on with um, CBM and this um, this calling that I felt to go overseas. And so um, I've been visiting any groups and things. And so that's what I've been doing, what I'll continue to do as I continue to prepare. Awesome. Uh, and so I will say on your behalf, Catherine, that uh, folks can contact you if they're interested in learning uh, more about uh, you becoming a global field staff with us and heading overseas. Uh, you can reach out to us at CBM if you'd like to have uh, Catherine speak uh, to your church or to your group um, in Atlanta, Canada, perhaps in person or over the wonders of technology like we are today via Zoom. I know, uh, I know Catherine would love to come and, and speak with you. Uh, so Catherine and I both want to invite you to join us in getting active the week of June 19th. It's an opportunity for you, your church, your neighbors, your family uh, to really make a difference in the lives of children and youth. We know that there's been more than 1.6 billion children out of school through this pandemic and the global disruption to education caused by this pandemic constitutes the worst education crisis on record. Uh, the stories that we hear and the statistics that we are seeing are really staggering, but we really do have the opportunity to make a real difference in the lives of children and youth um, as we get active this summer and raise funds for CBM's education related programs in nine countries, nine countries around the world. Uh, so we would love for you to join us. You can check out all the details at Active in Mission. Dot ca. Uh, you can register your team online, set up a fundraising page, share your progress and your stories, set a goal uh, to join us. Um, our big goal is to raise $60,000 to support kids' education around the world. You can find information about the countries and the projects as well on our website, and we'd be happy to connect with you on that. So thanks again, Catherine, uh, and thank you so much for joining us. Take care.